In this video, we're going to take a look at every G.I. Joe vamp ever produced, starting with the 1982 classic, running through to the recently released G.I. Joe classified series vamp, and every single version in between. The first toy vehicle that Hasbro ever made for G.I. Joe was the official combat Jeep that was released way back in 1965 for the original 12-inch Action Soldier range. After G.I. Joe took a six-year hiatus before being revamped, as the three and three quarter inch scale to Real American Hero line, it was quite poetic that Hasbro offered a modern version of the Jeep for this new iteration of the world's first action figure. The Vamp is an iconic symbol of the early days of G.I. Joe a Real American Hero, and its technologically advanced design was perfectly aligned with Hasbro's mission to reinvent G.I. Joe for a modern era. The Vamp is so popular that it has been reissued almost countless times over the last 42 years, with different decos and armaments. And now that it has been recreated in the 1 to 12 scale for the classified series, I thought it was the ideal time to take a look back at the history of the G.I. Joe Vamp. Come with me, toy fans. Hey toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel. Released in 1982, the Vamp was G.I. Joe's first four-wheeled multi-purpose attack vehicle, and this example was very kindly donated to the channel by MVargo97 who has an excellent YouTube channel of his own, and you'll find a link to his channel in the video description below. This Hasbro offering also came included with a driver figure codenamed Clutch. Way to go, guys! Now let's dig in and get a detail started for the island! The Vamp appeared in the very first issue of the Marvel G.I. Joe comic, as well as making multiple appearances in the Sumbo cartoon, and its design was heavily influenced by the Lamborghini Cheetah a prototype off-road vehicle built by the legendary Italian car maker in 1977. Where the Cheetah was a four-seater vehicle, the Vamp can only accommodate two Joes, as the rear seats were removed to fit out the Vamp with a pair of mounted 50 caliber machine guns, and this accessory could elevate and pivot. These guns also include a lever that children could use to make the gun barrels fire and recoil. Unlike a lot of later issue G.I. Joe vehicles that had numerous fragile parts, the Vamp was designed with a very sturdy, almost unbreakable construction. The rigid chassis is supported by four free rolling wheels that are attached to metal rod axles. Unfortunately, you cannot steer the front wheels, but if Hasbro had incorporated that feature into the design, it certainly would have compromised its claims of the Vamp having a sturdy construction for rugged play. The detailed interior features a gear stick and steering wheel, and a cage mounted at the rear affords the Vamp the ability to carry spare fuel in a couple of jerry cans. The original straight arm clutch comes with a removable helmet, and has that classic OD green uniform design that was the signature element of the early G.I. Joe A Real American Hero range. According to his file card, Clutch greases his hair with motor oil, rarely shaves, and chews on the same toothpick for months. The most notable foreign variation of the Vamp arrived in 1983 and was included in Palatoy's Action Force line in the United Kingdom. Renamed the Panther, this version of the Vamp has a black and yellow colour scheme to match the design of the Action Force SAS team, and these contrasting colours really pop on a display shelf. Aside from the redeco, this is basically the same toy, yet Palatoy did make one subtle change that is an improvement over the American counterpart, and this is the addition of rubber tyres that are wider than Hasbro's plastic wheels. The Action Force Panther also features a different driver, with Palatoy opting to include a recolored version of Snake Eyes that they oddly renamed as Stalker. 1984 was very much the year of the Vamp, with Hasbro releasing three different versions of this iconic G.I. Joe vehicle. First off we have the Vamp Mark II, and this edition featured a new desert tan camouflage design. The Mark II also benefits from the addition of a roof over the cab and a pair of opening doors. The twin machine guns have been swapped out for a missile launcher, and this vamp now has a roll of camo netting strapped onto the hood, and a pair of spotlights attached to the front bar. Alongside the vamp Mark II, Clutch was also issued with a new desert tan uniform to match the colour of his new ride. Also released in 84, we have the Sears exclusive vamp that came packaged with a heavy artillery laser. At first glance, this appears to be a reissue of the original 1982 vamp. Yet upon closer inspection, you'll notice that the Sears exclusive has an entrenching tool added to the mold, even though it is weirdly not shown on the box art. This version is also notable for being the first Vamp release without a driver figure. The third and final release for 1984 is a personal favourite, with Destro stealing a G.I. Joe Vamp and giving it an overhaul to create the Cobra Knight Attack Stinger. 
This Cobra version of the Vamp is coloured in black with grey accents and fitted with a roof and opening gullwing doors, which are similar but not the same as the Vamp Mark II. The twin machine guns have been exchanged for a rack of four ground-to-air rockets. A new spiked ram bar gives the front of the Stinger a very aggressive look, yet by far the best upgrade is the addition of a rear platform that allows the Stinger to transport up to four troops, as opposed to all the previous versions of the Vamp that could only carry two figures. The Stinger driver is also one of the nicest redecoed figures in the entire range. Hasbro took the Swivel Arm Cobra Officer and gave him a grey uniform with black equipment and red embellishments, and I thoroughly enjoy the colour scheme of this uniform. The next couple of versions of the Vamp are both quite rare. In 1986 we got a colour changing version of the Vamp included with the Sears exclusive Dreadnought Ground Assault. And then in 1988 the Vamp Mark II was reissued by Hasbro, but was only available via mail order. However, during the same year, a lighter tan version of the Mark II was also available, but only in a select few foreign markets, such as Canada and Brazil. China Force, showing the colors yellow and black. Hungry to fight and ready to attack. No fighting, G.I. Joe. As part of the Tiger Force line in 1989, Hasbro took the body of the Vamp Mark I and the attachments from the Vamp Mark II and combined them with a gaudy paint job to create the Tiger Sting. The G.I. Joe fandom is often divided over their opinion of the Tiger Force and the Python Patrol, and whether you like the colour schemes or not, the Tiger Sting remains a very notable entry in the history of the Vamp, as it was the last version to be sold under the Real American Hero banner. The next time the Vamp toy mould would be used in the United States wouldn't be until 1994, when it was employed to create the Street Striker for the Street Fighter official movie line. This is quite the esoteric version, and while we're on the subject of oddities, Let's rapid fire through a bunch of other weird and wonderful versions of the Vamp. Produced by the Fun School Company of India, we have a red version of the Vamp called the MRF Racing Jeep, a blue edition named the Super Cop Rescue Squad Jeep, and a dark green Giggles Army Jeep. Back in the United States in 1988, we were offered a recolored Cobra Stinger that was now renamed the Rattler. This name change is in keeping with this theme of oddities, since the Rattler was originally the name of Cobra's iconic ground attack jet that was released back in 1984, the same year in which the Stinger was first released. In 2001, the Desert Striker was added to the range, followed by the Vamp with Twin Battle Gun that was issued in 2004 as part of the Valor vs Venom line, and in 2007, the really cheap looking Vamp Mark V was offered as a convention exclusive. Lord knows what happened to the Mark III and Mark IV versions of the Vamp. The year 2008 would see the return of the classic looking Vamp as part of the G.I. Joe 25th anniversary line, and this edition featured some welcome upgrades, such as painted seats and a removable shovel that clipped onto the hood. A 2010 model of the Vamp was included in the Pursuit of Cobra line, but it is markedly different from the original Vamp design, and Hasbro reused this updated tooling to produce two new versions of the Vamp Mark II in 2011 before eventually reissuing the original Vamp Mark II in two different colorways in 2014 to commemorate the 50th anniversary of G.I. Joe, and these were sold as San Diego Comic-Con exclusives. Now we finally get to the most recent version of the Vamp, where Hasbro upscaled this iconic toy to fit in with their six inch tall G.I. Joe classified series. This edition of the Vamp is the first significant vehicle to be issued to the G.I. Joe team in this larger scale, beyond the much smaller Ram cycle that was released in 2021. And the classified Vamp also gains props for not being hidden behind the corporate crowdfunding HasLab model. The overall design is extremely faithful to the original Vamp from 1982, with some added details such as the spotlights and the canvas roll strapped to the hood of the vehicle being borrowed from later models. Hasbro was also able to incorporate a lot of extra details on this Vamp that were not included on the smaller scale versions, such as an opening hood that reveals a moulded engine block, a working winch, and a pair of towing shackles hanging from the front fender. And these are actually separate pieces and not just painted on, and that's a really nice touch. As are the wing mirrors that actually feature reflective stickers. When I first took this toy out of the box, I was really impressed with the sheer volume of accessories included here. And I'm not talking about the items that come with clutch, we'll talk about those in a minute. The Vamp itself has several accessories. The inclusion of these items is well thought out, and every piece has its own storage location. The entrenching tool clips onto the front of the Vamp, the fire extinguisher is housed between the headrests, and the fuel cans are carried in a cage at the rear, that also has a spot to carry the axe. 
The clutch action figure has a really nicely sculpted face with a slick haircut and a beard, but he sports some pretty lame looking tattoos on his forearms. His overall aesthetic is in keeping with the OD green uniformity of the original line, and he carries a pistol in a crossbody holster, and has a removable wrench tucked into a tool belt that is strapped around his thigh. Clutch is also armed with a shotgun and equipped with two helmets. While I've heard some other reviewers say that there is nowhere to securely store this shotgun, it does tuck in quite well behind him, between his seat and the centre console. I can do without the silly steel core helmet with the teeth painted onto the jawline, but the standard issue helmet looks great. It is a little loose on his head, but that's because his chin strap is undone, and as anyone who has ever worn a military helmet will attest, they wobble all over the place if you don't have your chin strap securely fastened. The twin mounted 50 cows are nicely sculpted, and each gun has a belt of linked rounds fed from an ammo can that rests on a small platform situated on the gun mount below. Unfortunately, this position isn't very stable, and the ammo cans will bounce around and fall off the platform when you take the vamp off road so I feel these accessories would have really benefited from the addition of a small peg to secure them in place. My other gripe with this new version of the VAMP is that the clip-on wheels wobble from side to side, leading to a lot of nervous drivers in the G.I. Joe motor pool. It also would have been really nice if we could steer the front wheels. Now before any of you jump in the comments section and say that the original VAMP didn't have steerable wheels, and that Hasbro is simply copying this design, then why did they go to the effort of adding an opening hood or a working winch? It's also important to remember that when the G.I. Joe team phased out the VAMP and replaced it with the Ore Striker in 1985, this vehicle came with steerable wheels, and if they could do it 39 years ago, they could have included it here. Yet instead of steerable wheels, we have independent suspension at each axle. The problem is that the wheel arches of the vehicle are far too small, and if you press down on the body of the VAMP, the wheel arches act like brakes. I have been very critical of the G.I. Joe Classified series over the last several years, but I call a spade a spade. You know, like, the Tiger Force Ram, that's stupid. But this vamp? This is awesome. When the Classified series started back in 2020, I never thought we'd get to a stage where vehicles like this would be included in the line. But here we are with an absolute cracker. The issues I mentioned earlier are only minor niggles that did not take away from my overall experience with the classified VAMP. This is a very high quality vehicle that displays wonderfully and is so chock full of accessories that, dare I say it, is really good value for money in today's modern toy market. I bet some of you thought you would never see the day where I gave a glowing endorsement of a modern Hasbro toy, but in this case, I think it's really well deserved which makes it such a shame that the toy sold out ages ago. Yet based on design alone, the classified VAMP is a fitting tribute to G.I. Joe's first, truly iconic vehicle, and it's one that I'll be proud to display in my collection. I'm now patiently waiting for the inevitable repaints, and I really hope Hasbro leads with the Cobra Stinger or the VAMP Mark II, and not the Tiger Sting, because I didn't want that toy in 1989, and I still don't want it today. So thank you all for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, you can click the links over here to check out some of our other G.I. Joe content. Or subscribe to the channel by clicking here, or consider supporting us on Patreon, where you'll get access to hours of exclusive content. I'm Tony from Analog Toys, and I'll see you in the next video.